The Boy at the Dyke, a Dutch folk tale, retold by M. J. York, illustrated by Laura Freeman. Many years ago, before your parents or your grandparents were born, a little boy named Peter lived near the sea. In Peter's country, Holland, unlike in many countries, the sea is higher than the land. The people of Holland built high, strong walls to keep the water out. We call these walls dikes. Peter and Early one day, Peter's mother handed Peter a sack of fresh cookies. She told him, "Take these cookies to your friend, the blind man. Follow the dike so you don't get lost, and be sure to come home before supper." "Of course, mother," replied Peter. "I am seven years old now. I am almost grown up." I will visit my friend and be home before supper. Happily, Peter set off along the dike towards his friend's home. He skipped through the fields and meadows. He styled a rabbit and watched it leap away. He felt the warm sunshine and smell of the bright flowers. He looked out to the sea, and saw ships sailing far away. Even though the sun was shining, Peter noticed that the water was high and the waves were tall. I know why my father called the water angry. He thought, "The sea looks as though it is trying to get in through the dike." At last, Peter reached the home of his friends, the blind man. He gave his friend the fresh cookies, then told the blind man about his walk along the dike. The rabbit, the sunshine, the flowers, and the ships. He stayed until the afternoon, sharing stories with his friend. At last, the clock struck three o'clock. Peter realized he had better leave, or he would be late for supper. So he set off from his friend's house. He followed the dike towards home. He was walking quickly so he would not be late for supper. Peter watched the sun over his shoulder. It was sinking closer and closer to the sea. Peter was almost running along the dike when he heard a tiny trickling noise. He stopped. And look closely at the dike. There, he saw a small hole in the dike. Water was coming through and trickling down the dike. Peter knew he did not have time to run home and warn someone. The water could burst through the dike at any time. He knew he had to stop the water himself. Quickly, he stuck his small finger in the hole. The water stopped. Peter felt brave and strong. I can keep back all the angry water of the sea with my little finger, he thought. But Peter was stuck. If he moved, the water would come through again. The sun set, and Peter was still stuck beside the dike. He yelled loudly for someone to help him, but no one heard him, and no one came by. At Peter's home, his mother was growing worried. Supper had come and gone, and still Peter was not home. She thought Peter must have stayed behind overnight with his friend, the blind man. I will have to scold him when he returns. But yet. She worried. Hours passed. Peter was cold, and a little scared in the dark. His legs and his arms were cramped. 
He was very tired, but he had to stay awake. He had to keep his finger in the dike. The night passed slowly for Peter at the dike, and his mother at home. Neither slept all night. Finally, morning came. Peter stretched his legs and his free arm, but he kept his finger in the dike. He was getting hungry, but still no one came. At last, Peter heard someone coming. It was a farmer, going to work in his field. Help me! Peter called softly, his voice quite untired. Fortunately, the man heard him and came running. Peter told his story, and the farmer went for help. Quickly, the farmer returned with other men. They stopped the hole in the dike. Finally, Peter was free. The farmer said, "Thank you, Peter. You are a brave boy, and you kept the angry water from flooding my field." And the farmer carried Peter home. And now the children of Holland learn the story of brave Peter, the little boy who kept back the angry waters of the sea.